Thank you for joining me today on another awesome day on the water. We're out here chasing these crappie down and I decided to do some active captain helm recording to share with you guys along with some great info on what I'm doing, the situation I'm in, I'm running my Gorman 1243 XSV with the LVS 32 transducer. It's turned out some awesome readings. I did make a few fine tuning adjustments on this day and I'm really liking it. You do not want to skip through this video because I'm going to put some really good tips in here to help you become a better live scoper. This is the deal. Y'all hang tight. Let's put some fish in the boat. Let's go get them. So what we have here is a piece of structure with a few fish on it. And I'm gonna tell you, I got some wind blowing on this day out there, 15, 20 miles an hour. And you can see that I got some resistance uh, pushing me back. Uh, and at, at times, you know, a little breeze can be good, especially if the fish are not spooky. But what I'm doing here is just, just playing around. I mean, I'm, I'm not in a big rush. I think this is old catfish going to pop up here try to hit that jig, but I'm not really interested in catching catfish as you already know. But uh, I'm just seeing how well I can hold my boat in this wind and uh, before I drop, I'm going to go across the top of that piece of structure right there and put that jig right on top of that fish's head and you'll see him immediately react right here and snatch swinging me and Denali laugh out loud now I, I did mention that how the wind's blowing and I'm gonna tell you something boat control is the deal to make live scope work now I got a few more fish in this structure now another thing too I want to say about this thing is live scope is no different than a spotlight shining on the structure so if you're out there and on a piece of structure, especially fishing structure, you know, take your boat around and look at different angles. Because if they're behind some other structure that's there, you won't be able to see them until you can get around that structure and allow that, that sonar beam to, to get in there to them. It's very critical to do that because you could be passing over fish. The fish there was an inactive fish. And I, I don't spend much time if, I, you know, I know that this bait that I have on, is, is a, a perfect bait, it's working great. Uh, we put a full limit in the boat on my guide trip earlier that morning. I here just doing me a little meat run right now. Uh, but boat control is so critical, guys. And you see how the bottom is shaking up and down right there? Right now, even during the week, man, we got so many boats out on the lake. During the week seems like, seems like a weekend. Now, that fish left that piece of structure. I'm gonna see if I can't chase it down and, and uh, present that bait to him again. Let's see what, what I can make happen here. Y'all are gonna get a laugh out of this one.
Yeah, that was an old gar. But I'll tell you this. Those old things put up a good fight. And I ain't scared to catch them. They put up a really good fight. Let's see if I can put a hook in him. Those old gar, if they're facing towards you or away from you, they are a perfect circle, just like a crappie. You have to really pay attention to them sometimes because if you don't, if you don't get a good look at them, you'll swear they're, they're, they're a crappie. something that I find quite often. This fish has him a spot on this little brush pile right here that where, where he's protected from the, the sunlight or something, but I cannot work this jig in there to him. I can get that jig really close, but one thing that you have to have to pay attention to is you need that jig the same brightness as that fish or you're not lined up with it. And you can see that jig up under that, that branch right there a little bit, but I just cannot get that jig in there to this fish. And I see it quite often. Those fish will get buried in that structure. You, you can see that fish, but you just cannot get that jig to them. I couldn't get the angle that I wanted on this shot right here. I think it goes without me saying what this deal is right here, but I'll have a better angle when it's not so windy on another video. And I, this thing shows up really good and you can really, really tell what it is. And, and it even looks like the trunk is up on this thing. But like I said, the, the wind was, it, it was really windy this day. There was a lot of boat traffic. So you'll see the bottom fluctuating up and down and that's just wakes you know, from other boats that that's causing that. But uh, this thing has been on the lake or under the, the water for a long, long time. I even seen it on, uh, you know, back when side imaging first came out. And uh, it's, it's been up under the water for a long time. So, no, I did not call Lake Patrol. Everybody knows about this vehicle. And if some of you guys that, that scan, you know, around on the lake, you know exactly where I was on that shot right there. All right, enough of that. Let's get to ripping some lips.
I will tell you this. If you're planning on only seeing a full fish on your live scope before you decide to fish for that fish, you're going to be missing a lot of fish. Now, I know that it looks like these things are little bitty fish when you first see them, but as I get them to stand on their tail, you can see that it's a much bigger fish than, than what you're seeing when they're close to that structure. When they're on that structure, they are blocked by some of what you get to see on live scope. And it's just that spotlight effect that we was talking about a little earlier. So you do not get to see the full fish when they're on structure. And you got to be able to watch for that brighter return that you get when, you know, that sonar picks them up. something that helps me tremendously uh, get on these fish and get on them quickly is before I get to that fish I want my depth set to where I can just drop on that fish when it's time to do so because like I always say you have seconds to get that bait to that fish when the time is right when you get him to that target range you have to be able to get that jig to that fish very quickly because you have seconds to, to make everything happen if you want to see all the action on your live scope something else that's critical to think about to be consistently successful catching crappie with live scope is you have to pay attention to the wind direction and you want your boat facing into the wind although sometimes it can be tough if the wind is swirling the reason behind that is it will assist you on having control over the speed of your boat versus the wind pushing you past your target I know that this is probably going to be the absolute hardest thing for you to to want to go and do and understand why why I'm saying this. If you if you've recently purchased Live Scope or you have Live Scope and you're not as good with it as you want to be, the one thing that's going to help you is getting on the water, not expecting to catch a ton of fish. Get out there and practice that boat control. As I said earlier, bow control is the number one thing that's going to help you get that jig to that fish and run it, you know, find out how to run your troll motor on the lowest possible speed that you can get away with is another technique to practice and uh, just 
being able to control your boat is going to help you tremendously. And another great thing that, that I will tell you is be sure to be using enough weight. Uh, and I don't mean go with a heavy, big old heavy jig, but what I'm saying is use a split shot. Use two or three split shots if that will help you get control of that bait to be able to get it to that fish very quickly. Things have to happen fast, but if you're not if you're not on board with how to control your boat and how to get that bait to that fish, making sure your jig is in that cone, the only way to get better is to get out there and practice. enjoyed the tips that I embedded in this video be sure to subscribe and give the video a thumbs up and as always thanks for watching and more coming soon